The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hey, Carrot Ustra is here with realagriculture.com. We are back here today with another Wheat School episode, and I have here with me Jeremy Boychin, who's an agronomy research extension specialist with Alberta Wheat and Barley Commissions. How's it going today? It's going great, Kara. It's warm. We're in a wheat field. Things are looking great. How are you? Oh, I'm great. It is, yeah, definitely. We're getting some good July heat down here in southern Alberta today. So we are here to talk about scouting for fusarium post-anthesis. What can you tell me about that? Yeah, so most of anthesis has already occurred in western Canada. We did have some high-risk areas um, in Alberta and Saskatchewan. So um, we did have some spray and go on. And a lot of the varieties or hopefully some of the varieties that some of the producers are using have some level of resistance. And then with an application, we're hopefully mitigating some of that risk from, from fusarium. But it doesn't give you complete control. Even with some level of resistance and an application of fungicide, that fungicide isn't giving complete control. It's only giving suppression. So you're still likely to see some level of infection in the field. So going out 10 to 14 days after anthesis and seeing whether you're you're witnessing any um, premature bleaching of spikes or heads um, that, that show an indication that there's fusarium head blight potentially in your fields. And what will that premature bleaching actually look like? So it really depends when infection occurred and what spikelets it occurred on. So sometimes the full head actually um, gets completely white and that shows infection occurred on the entire head or sometimes it's just a couple of spikelets. Typically you'll see it uh, because wheat flowers from the inside out. Uh, you'll see it either in patches in the middle or at the top or at the bottom um, but it, it, it varies depending on the level of infection and, and how many spores were there so, so it really depends but generally you're, you're looking for it on the head of that wheat plant. So is fusarium different year to year or if you're seeing it in your field at this point this year you might want to be looking out next year? Yeah so if you're seeing it in the fields this year that means um, you're going to have those spores in your field that are going to be a risk for for the future um, and the big piece of information you're getting from this when you're scouting post anthesis is is making management decisions around harvest and then what to do with that seed. Because if you're scouting different fields and if you had different maturity times of different fields, you may have different infection levels. So if you want to store that seed differently and then manage selling that seed differently, it allows you to do that and allows you to be a bit more prepared. It can allow you to make a decision of, of whether you want to clean that seed after um, or to increase your fan speed and blow some of that out of the back if you know you already have high infection levels in your soil. Um, so it allows you to make those decisions and it even goes a little bit further than that and allows you to ask the question, okay, is this seed that I want to use for future years? Um, and if it is, do I need to seed treat for it or should I just replace it with a whole new seed lot either way? Okay, awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I think the only thing I missed on um, the, the visuals is you will get the premature bleaching, but you will also get in wetter conditions, you'll get a little bit of um, salmon pink coloration on those as well. Um, and that is the spores of, of that fusarium um, growing a little bit more. So you'll see both of those symptoms of, of bleaching. Um, and then in wet conditions, you'll see a little bit of that pinkish color as well. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kara.